Republicans have been wallowing after yet another string of defeats in key battleground states on Tuesday as the frontrunner for their party's presidential nomination, Donald Trump, faced more legal trouble with his daughter, Ivanka, taking the stand in their New York fraud trial. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. <laughs> Donald Trump's daughter, Ivanka, arrived at the Manhattan courthouse today and took the witness stand in the Trump company's civil fraud trial, a scenario Trump was reportedly desperate to avoid, I'm assuming because Ivanka is, in his eyes, the most competent and thus most knowledgeable member of the family. There's no way Trump trusted his two bearded oblong bozos with any... <laughs> real information, but Ivanka could get him in trouble because while Don Jr. was in the woods posing for the cover of his country folk Christmas album and Eric was in Brazil having his gums lowered, I'm willing to bet Ivanka was in the room for everything. For example, maybe she could explain what the hell her father was talking about on Monday when he pulled out a piece of paper during his testimony and said it would clear his name. Hours into his testimony, Trump attempted to read from a piece of paper he retrieved from his pocket. I'd love to read this, Your Honor, if I could. Am I allowed to do that, Trump asked. When the judge said no, Trump muttered, I'm shocked, I'm shocked. So <laughs> on top of everything else, Donald Trump has never seen an episode of Law and Order. <laughs> Your Honor, may I present non-submitted evidence from the witness stand? Do whatever you want. Courtrooms are famously loose with the rules. <laughs> In fact, if you, if I ever say anything you don't like, feel free to object to me. <laughs> I'm honestly dying to know what that document was because it was no doubt incredibly stupid. <laughs> Your Honor, I have in my possession the fortune from a cookie <laughs> obtained last night in Mr. Chang's on 58th Street. It reads as follows. <clears throat> what you believe you can make true, I accept your apology. <laughs> I accept, and I believe I'm free to go. Honestly, I'm just shocked Trump didn't pull out some of the courtroom sketches that have been released so he could complain about them. Trump's former press secretary called one particular sketch of Trump a travesty and said it looks nothing like him. Now, I'll admit, it doesn't look a ton. <laughs> it don't look a ton like Trump until you widen out and see the hands. <laughs> they nailed the hands. <laughs> By the way, the same artist who drew that Sketch also did one of El Chapo, and yet somehow, a guy who shares a courtroom sketch artist with a notorious drug kingpin remains the GOP frontrunner for president. <laughs> in fact, recent polls suggest he's in a dead heat with Joe Biden. So Democrats are stealing themselves for some big losses on Tuesday in several key bellwether states like Virginia. I know a clip package is coming, so let's just get it over with. The polling is awful. I'm sure Democrats got crushed. Just hit me with the bad news so I can go sulk. Overnight, Democrats celebrating a series of key victories. Big wins for Democrats and for abortion rights. In Ohio, voters have decided overwhelmingly to make abortion a right under the state constitution. In Virginia, CNN projects Democrats will gain full control of the state legislature. Meanwhile, in Kentucky, it was Democratic Governor Andy Bashir defeating the state's Republican Attorney General, General Daniel Cameron, who had been backed by former President Donald Trump. Well, allow me to quote the great Edward R. Murrow and say, what the f is going on? <laughs> You're telling me Biden is losing to Trump in the polls, but a Democrat just won re-election against a Trump-backed candidate in Kentucky. You're telling me Trump, the guy who stocked the Supreme Court with 80s movie villains with the explicit goal of overturning Roe v. Wade, is leading the polls in Ohio, where voters just overwhelmingly approved a ballot measure to protect abortion rights? This makes so little sense. Even Steve Kornacki's big board last night said, I give up. <laughs> One thing's for sure, standing up for abortion rights and bodily autonomy wins elections. Voters are clearly furious about losing Roe, and in even supposedly red states like Kentucky and Ohio, they've been turning out large numbers to protect reproductive rights. Ohio is the seventh state to enshrine abortion rights through a ballot initiative since Roe was overturned. And that includes battleground states like Michigan, and even Deep red states like Kansas. Abortion was also very much on the ballot in Virginia, where the Republican governor, Glenn Youngkin, was hoping to win full control of the state legislature so he could pass a 15-week abortion ban. Although you might not know that from this Fox News interview he did on Election Day. Welcome to Virginia. It's Election Day, and we are going to hold our house yes! and flip our Senate. Ever since uh, the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, Republicans have lost most of those elections. How's today going to be different? 
Well, let me just begin with the fact that the biggest issue across the Commonwealth of Virginia, I hear it every day, we've had 100 campaign stops, I hear it every day, is inflation sure. and jobs and concerns about what Biden is doing to our economy. It's so telling that these guys spent 50 years laser focused on their number one goal of overturning abortion rights. And then as soon as they do it, not only do they not brag about it, they'd rather talk about literally anything else. So what's your position on abortion? Well, I think first of all, we have to talk about jobs. My question was about abortion. Then, of course, we need to talk about inflation. Okay, but what about abortion? And then, of course, what we really need to focus on is Hunter Biden's laptop. I'm asking about abortion, and I will get to that. But first, what do you think of my shiny red vest? <laughs> I stole it off a of Carnival Cruise. <laughs> it was also evident in the way they were coping last night that Republicans are having a hard time coming to terms with the fact that their position on abortion is deeply unpopular with the majority of voters. Here's Fox host Sean Hannity trying to wrap his brain around why the issue keeps hurting Republicans. Democrats right. are trying to scare women into thinking Republicans right. don't want abortion legal under any circumstances. First of all, if Democrats were trying to scare people, they would just show them this courtroom sketch. <laughs> but yeah, I wonder where voters could possibly have gotten the notion that Republicans want to outlaw abortion, aside from all the GOP-led states that have outlawed abortion, or the GOP politicians who say they want to outlaw abortion, or the new Speaker of the House who sponsored a bill to outlaw abortion, and who's so conservative, and this is real, he said last year that he and his 17-year-old son monitor each other's porn intake. That's real. He said that. They apparently use an app that sends each other a report when they look at porn so they can hold each other accountable. Can you imagine knowing in real time <laughs> when your dad is watching porn? The only thing I want to hear from my dad on the phone is, hold on, your mother wants to say hi. <laughs> also, how can you, sir, use an app to monitor porn when your name sounds like a porn actor's name? <laughs> for example, the other day, I wanted to learn more about his extreme right-wing position, so I Googled the words Johnson Exposed, and let's just say, <laughs> The notifications on the porn monitoring app my dad made me install were blowing up. <laughs> he called me right away, and I said, I was working on a closer look. And then he said, you should take a closer look at your priorities. <laughs> Although it is fun to imagine what it would have been like if Joe Biden had that app on his phone with his son, Hunter. <laughs> Just mid-press conference, hold on a sec, my phone is buzzing. Oh, oh, uh, oh dear God, Hunter. Dear God, Hunter, get a hold of yourself, man. <laughs> Keep it on the laptop, buddy. <laughs> anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah, so Republicans were wallowing last night. In fact, they were so bummed that over on Newsmax, former GOP senator and presidential candidate Rick Santorum was complaining about the fact that Democrats sponsored ballot initiatives to legalize marijuana and enshrine abortion rights. We've seen this now for the last several years. And so a base election, they, uh, Democrats outspend, and you put very sexy things like abortion and marijuana on the ballot, and a lot of young people come out and vote. Ooh la la. <laughs> abortion and marijuana are sexy now? That's so weird to hear coming from international sex symbol Rick Santorum. <laughs> You think marijuana is sexy? Look, by the time Ohio is cool with anything, it's not sexy anymore. <laughs> marijuana is for 50-year-olds at a Dead & Company concert. Marijuana <laughs> is so tame compared to what teens are into these days. If Rick Santorum ever watched so much as five minutes of Euphoria, he'd come out looking like Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> I mean, that's what I look like after I watch one episode of Euphoria. <laughs> is this what teens are really like? What's clear is that the GOP's various culture war obsessions and hostility to democracy are turning off voters. That doesn't mean Democrats should feel comfortable. Trump, as we've said before, can still easily win, unless, you know, he ends up in jail, which I have to say would be... Very sexy. This <laughs> better close your look. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching A Closer Look. And as a reminder, my brother Josh and I have started a new podcast called Family Trips with the Myers Brothers. We hope you listen. We hope you like it. And see you soon.